Welcome everyone to day two, Nepal Safer Schools Learning Week on retrofitting and earthquake safe building schools, scaling solutions. I'm Conscience Reshta, the moderator for today's session. Amy Selmayer will be helping me today with the technical parts of the session as well. Thanks, Amy. Yesterday, during our first session on whole school approach to safety, comprehensive school safety minimum package in action, we heard from our panelists and participants about some of the key challenges to implementing CSSMP, some of the good practices that can be applied, as well as recommendations for effective and skilled implementation of the CSSMP. One of the key challenges discussed yesterday was how there needs to be a better integration between pillars, the three pillars, safe school facilities, school disaster management, and risk reduction education. We also heard a very interesting uh, and vivid example of how retrofitting schools without proper implementation of the other two pillars on disaster management and risk reduction education can make it ineffective at the end. Today, we'll be discussing how to make it easier for schools and local governments to understand and pro understand the processes and access support to improve school safety in Nepal's schools. Retrofitting school buildings as a cost-effective option to help save lives has widely been accepted, and schools are eager to make their buildings safer. But retrofit projects from design plans and obtaining, obtaining approvals to oversee procurement and constructions can be very complicated to manage. And schools and local governments often find it difficult to access technical expertise. We're eager to discuss these and more with our very interesting panelists and participants today. Without further ado, uh, I would like to first invite Leela Mukutla, team leader of the Nepal Safer Schools Project, to welcome the participants and to share the objectives of the Nepal Safer Schools Learning Week as well as today's session. Thank you. Over to you, Leela. Thanks so much, Kanchan. Um, I really want to thank everybody for joining this session. Um, it's especially Mr. Powdell from CEHRD that for giving your time. I know you're very, very busy and it's uh, difficult to make time for all of these kinds of meetings. Um, retrofitting is just one of the aspects of the CSSMP, at, and, and, but it's probably one of the more complex ones, uh, just in terms of having the knowledge and capacity to be able to retrofit out in the field. NSSP focused on helping implement all aspects of CSSMP, um, but we did find retrofitting is where there was the biggest gap in knowledge um, and capacity and resources uh, to use these techniques. Of course, earthquakes are a big risk in Nepal and all over the world, and retrofitting is clearly a very worthwhile uh, intervention. Um, and it's life-saving as well as cost-effective. So I think that's pretty much all we can ask for uh, right now. Um, in our small pilot, and unfortunately it was a small pilot, um, we found that we could estimate the cost of retrofitting school buildings was about a third of building a new reinforced concrete building. So that works very well in resource-challenged places like Nepal. Um, however, we found there was a real challenge in building knowledge, um, a broad knowledge about retrofitting and skills around these techniques, uh, which means that basically it's difficult to do these kinds of um, interventions at scale, and that's what we need to work towards. We need to have a strong workforce of not only trained masons, engineers, and designers who can retrofit and are um, convert with the techniques, but also people on the policy side uh, who local and central level planners, education decision makers, and community leaders who see retrofitting as a really viable option um, and a sound investment. Unfortunately, because of NSSP's early closure, we didn't have the opportunity to scale up from our small pilot, but it's something I really believe and I think we all really believe is, is worthy and it's a great goal and we need to continue our efforts um, and focus on this in the future. 
today's panelists, and it's really a pleasure to have you with us. Um, we'll shine more light on, on the steps that can strengthen Nepal's practice of earthquake safe construction and retrofitting. Um, the NSSP team um, would like to thank uh, UK Aid, of course, for their support for this project. Um, and I look forward to a great discussion today. So thank you. Thank you, Lila, for setting up the context very well for today, um, as well as diving into uh, what, we, what we have been discussing. Um, but next, I would like to invite for a short video, to see a short video of uh, some of the work done under the Nepal Safer Schools project. Amy, would you like to play the video? What makes a school safe? Creating a safer school environment requires a whole school approach, including everything from safer buildings, hazard-free grounds, and practices like emergency drills, to mechanisms to deal with harassment and bullying, and local government contingency plans, detailing how to keep kids safe and continue learning in emergencies. All of these aspects are included in the government of Nepal's vision for school safety. Part of this vision, the Comprehensive School Safety Minimum Package, outlines 16 key activities under three main pillars that are essential to ensure a safe learning environment for students, faculty, and school communities. Over three years, the Nepal Safer Schools project worked with 52 schools in Acham, Bardia, Joomla, and Sirket to fulfill aspects of the CSSMP and help them view their own schools from a safety lens. As the COVID-19 crisis escalated, the project also helped schools and local governments respond. यो विद्यालय सुरक्षा कार्यक्रम हमरो विद्यालय में भित्री नून है यहाँ का समुदाय बाल बालिका और को संपूर्ण को अवस्था तय एकदम अगाड़ी बढ़ने रा उन्हीं ओर ले जोखिम बाढ़ बसने उपाय सीखने नून है ठुलो पूरा भाई को मायले बुझे कुछ साथ साथ यहाँ हमले सेनो ये उटा कार्यक्रम चलाएँ गोष्टी जस्तो अवस्था में हमला जोखिम राय को साथा भन्ने करा अभिभावक विद्यार्थी रा शिक्षक साथियों रू साइट को ये उटा गोष्टी चले को थियो क्यों ये गोष्टी ले गर दाने हमरा ये भवन औरू बनाऊने रा जोखिम राय का ठाउं और लाई कसरी न्यूनी कारण कारण सकिंचा भने रा सोचने ये उटा बात दे बनायो एडीपी बीपोड हमरो � रही रही कुछ है जैसे ही हमरे विद्यालय में ही मनोसक्षम हूँ विद्यालय में थोड़ा थोड़ा दुर्घटनाओं रूप कम पो अगला की बाड़ी अथवा हवा हो रही संस्थियों तो थोड़ा दुर्घटनाओं रूप है भाई वाणी हमरे ग्राउंड को उरी परी खेल मैदान में सांसद ढूंगा संध बनी तो ढूंगा ले पनी त्यां रह का बाल वाली का हो लाई विपत्ति जन्ने अथवा विपत्ति का इस तरह उन्हरू लाई दुर्घटना उन्हें भाई वाणी जो कि मनोसक्त है हमरो विद्यालय में हमी शिक्षक विद्यार्थी र समुदाय में पनी यो रेट्रोफिटिंग संसंगे इस तक गति भी दर्द लाई कौशली परमोट गणना संगीत सा इसलिए इस बार कौशली हमें सेफ होने सकते हैं बन्ने बारे में जनचेतना का कुरान में बैगासन और हमें लेकिन यह हमरो शिक्षक और को लाइफ में फर्स्ट एड ट्रेनिंग का कुरान और सर विद्यार्थी और लाइफ पर यो हमरो हमरा यो डीएस संग संबंधित को गति भी � जस्ट तो लाइफ हमला बन था थी है ना अब बाहर जैकेटिंग करे रहा अब सामान्य का थावगट गर्ल सब बन सा ये लेके सुरक्षित नहीं होला यो असाध्य ये किसी में कुछ नहीं किया बना ले रॉक बंदा बनी और तो स्ट्रोंग दूर है शाह पूरा ये जैकेटिंग सिस्टम बैठा जाली के के करे रहा यो पूरे ही एकदम ही चाइनीज इसको जो यो मानचे आरुप नहीं ये किसी में को फर्क ढंग ले बायो अब तो यो शादा ये स्ट्रोंग हुंसा वन्ने किसी में को हर एक मानचे में देखिए कुछ आ। Altogether, the project retrofitted 91 classrooms across four schools and extended technical support to four additional schools. To help build local technical expertise, the NSSP trained more than 350 masons, arming them with skills that will contribute to making buildings in their communities safer in the future. आज रेस में तो ये पहला देखने काम तो गाड़ी को कॉर्नियर हो, देरी साथी हो, नॉनसा है ना, तो ये पुनी तालिम ले सही 
अज सक्षम बनाऊद जस्तु हाइन में कर्मी में एटा चाह भावना के होता भादा खी कसरी हो छिटो करने राो करने एटा सोच हो अब तो भापनी तालीम में मजबूती मेन चाह मजबूती हेन पर्ने रह कर्मी साथी यो एनएसपीसपी को तालीम ली सके धेरे कुछ जानकारी होना जिस तालीम चाहे लिने पर्द रह By the end of the project, schools had completed vulnerability and capacity assessments, CSSMP orientations, trained teachers, students, and school leaders in disaster risk reduction, and incorporated DRR elements into school improvement plans that will help ensure that school safety improvements are made into the future. विद्यालय में प्राथमिक उपचार को लागे सर्वप्रथम तो दुजना सर में अपने तालिम पायर आमनु भाइयों पहला कहाँ लाने के करने बनने उन्हें बने अरे तो सामग्री और छा आमिषण का सिप पानी छा तेरे दहरी हमने आप ही गए थे गए थे कैसा तो शिक्षक विद्यार्थी को आचार समिति निर्माण कर रहा था आचार समिति हम लोग पुराने साल में हमने पहला बनी बनाया गया थे और आज फिर तो चला है पुनः परिमार्जन कर रहे हैं व्यवस्था समिति वाला पास कर रहा है हम संबंधी कुरान आमले योजना में ही रखा रहा ये वाटा विभिन्न जो कि न्यूनी कुरान को छोटा अवधि को योजना बनाया गया था तो योजना अंतर्गत का कार्यक्रम और संसाधन करने वाले विद्यालय शुरू से फिर विद्यालय शुरू से योजना वास्तव में रखा रहा हमने आगे बढ़ाया था इन्हीं कुरान में अपनी आमर तो जिन भवन जोखिम धेरे थी तेसाई पर हमें धेरे रिक्वेस्ट गये रुनर्माण पानी अभी अपांगता मैत्री रैंप बने रेलिंग बने प्रत्येक कक्षा 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 में ये बिजुली बने फैन सब ठाव में बने बाल बालिका सहज सीकाई वातावरण सीखने को सहज वातावरण सीर्जना अ Thank you, Amy, for sharing that wonderful video. I think it concisely puts together what has been done and some of the learnings from the NSSSP. Um, great. So moving ahead, as we dive into the panel discussion, I would like to request Amy to put the guiding questions on screen. And I would also like to request participants to put their uh, introductions on the chat box so we get to know you a little bit better. Please put your name and affiliation. Uh, please also put your questions in the chat box. We'll be taking the questions at the end of the panel discussion after our four participants today. So if you have any questions and comments, please uh, feel free to uh, continue sharing your thoughts with us. We will capture them at the end uh, of the discussion. Panelists, thank you again for being here today. You all will have eight minutes to share your first round of remarks and presentations so that there is adequate time for discussion at the end. You will hear a small gong or a small sound at seven minutes to alert you that you have one minute remaining. We would like to request all the participants again to share their comments and questions in the chat box. While posing your question, please note to which panelists it is directed. Um, the guiding questions are, as you can see, um, Amy, is it up? Yeah, so the guiding questions are, how can earthquake safe construction and in particular retrofitting can be promoted and prioritized at the local level? What initiatives and interventions might help technical expertise more uh, be more accessible to schools, municipalities that want to retrofit? Which steps of the process are most challenging for them to navigate independently? And the third question is, what information, particularly around costs, benefits, and con considerations of retrofitting from NSSP and other projects might be most helpful for local level decision makers considering this option? So these are the guiding questions uh, to our panelists and also for our participants. Our first speaker today, we're very uh, lucky to have him today with us, uh, Mr. Ganesh Prasad Paudel, Director of Center of Education and Human Resource Development, Ministry of Education, Science and Technology. 
धन्यवाद गणेश जी व्यस्त समय में आने भो हम धीरे आभारी छाई को अब प्रस्तुति को लगी अनुरोध करना चाहिए तब को प्रस्तुति स्लाइड चेंज कर दूसरे सुनी रख धन्यवाद धन्यवाद नमस्कार गणेश जी हजर सुरू कर टाइम किपू मत मिनट में मैं सो आवाज दिए भू एक मिनट बाकी हस् धन्यवाद नमस्कार सब जाना एकदम यह मौका दिव मेस को सर्वप्रथम एकदम धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ मैं मेरे प्रेजेन्टेशन नेपाली में कर कंचनजी ने आवश्यक पड़ा खेल डेफिनेटली सपोर्ट कर आई एम गणेश पौड़ आई वर्क फर द सी एस आर डी एज अ डाइरेक्टर मैं थोड़े कुछ पोलिशी लेवलसंग जोड़िए स्पेसिफिक रूप में मेरे मित्र नारायणजी हो स्वाभाविक रूप में वहाँ जोड़ने स्लाइड रन भैर है कि भो ओके थैंक यू हमी यो बृहत विद्यालय सुरक्षा संबंधी नीति संग जोड़ विषय भक्त होना मैं इस उठान हमी सर्वप्रथम अगिलो वर्ष मत्री सरकार जारी कर राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति दुई हजार छिहत्तर ने विद्यालय में भवन कक्षा कोठा फर्निचर प्रयोगशाला शौचालय पानी पुस्तकालय बुक करना जस्ता भौतिक पूर्वाधार तैयार करने विद्यालय भवन लगाय संपूर्ण भौतिक पूर्वाधार विपद जोखिमयुक्त बनाई सब विद्यालय सुरक्षित बाल मैत्री हरित विद्यालय के रूप में विस करने लगाय का नीतिगत प्रावधान रख वास्तव में हमी यो सेक्टर में काम करने सेफ स्कूल को लगी काम करने सब को लगी एटा सुखद अनुभूति होता वास्तव में नीति ने प्रष्ट रूप में हमी गाइड कर र स्वाभाविक रूप में इस भाग अगड़ी पी लीलाजी सेयर करो कंचनजी ने बीच में जोड़ी रहने जो हम कंप्रिहेन्सिव सेफ्टी स्कूल प्लान भि अथवा प्रोग्राम भि तीनवटा पिलर को कुछ सुरक्षित संरचना रिकाई सुविधा विद्यालय विपद व्यवस्थापन रोखिम न्यूनीकरण तथा उत्थानशीलता प्रबंधन शिक्षा का तीनवटा पिलर भि रहे नई हमी आ, काम करते आई रहो भि को मस्टर प्लान ली चाह रिविजिट करने क्रम में छो रस्टर प्लान भि नई हमी अविड रेस्पोन्स को लगी कम्युनिटी डिजिज को रूप में चाह इस यो मस्टर प्लान भि ए स्पेस क्रिएट कर योग जोड़ इंटरवेन्सन चाहिए प्लीज नेक्स्ट स्लाइड यो स्लाइड बाय स्लाइड ट्रांसलेशन को रिक्वेस्ट चैट बक्स आयोजन टाइम लिऊ सर प्लीज हजर हस् थैंक यू गणेश जी सो दर इज मीन रिक्वेस्ट फर ट्रांसलेसन लाइफ ट्रांसलेसन सो आई एम गोइंग टू ट्राई एंड अटेम टू वॉट गणेश जी जस्ट शेयर सो द कम्प्रिहेन्सिव स्कूल सेफ्टी स्टैटस द स्ट्रैटेजिक स्टैटस हेज बीन शेयर बाय गणेश जी द पॉलिसी अफ ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवेन्टी सिक्स इन नेपाल हेज क्लियरली Uh, stated the the highlights the major objectives um that includes uh, you know safe facilities classrooms furnitures uh, lamps uh, bathrooms and water health and water and sanitation uh, facilities as well library so it includes comprehensively what the policy of nepal uh, aims to do and the comprehensive school safety uh, master plan has the three pillars which we also discussed yesterday the uh, safe schools uh, facilities as well as uh, disaster school disaster management 
disaster risk reduction um, and risk mitigation um, education as well. So he talked about the three pillars that are also part of the uh, national policy of 2076. Thank you, Manishi. Uh, thank you. And uh, I also like to add uh, this uh, safe school policy is well adopted by our national education policy, which was introduced by last year. Uh the main message or nay amili jun uh e document or shed gadrato, jatipani kare come or gorirato, jun policy or shed gadato, it tine is sobeko mean message bandabaniko, uh suretcha jokim nunicara sobal uh praticari who response uh jun uh gorsu amile uh you esco 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 mul message any way or Rarko, Ami, Chai Surachitra, Samrachi, Sikai Bataban, Total Ami, Amro audience, Bandavaniko, definitely Balbalika Haru, Nayun, Jun Aili Ajaku, Din Kukuragaru, and the Kitai, Lagok Ossi Lak, Bandabari, Bidyartiuru, and Bidale School Education Machan, Unurko Surachit, Rasamrachit, Sikai, or a learning Bataban, Chai Great Gurney, Nayo, Rasangai, Ami Deja, Tisama, Surachit Vidale, Baiko, Deskurupma. Um, because Gurney, you, 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 Lagatka Mulsan de Saruchai, Yamra Ile, Amili, Adopt Gareka, um, Policy Aruli, Diegasan. Raisi on Sarta is Kukaran and Ranitima, Amili, Briat Bidale Suracha, uh, Lai Bidale Masonstagat, Gurney, Lagatko Kuraucha, Tisti Sonstaga Chimata, because Gurney, you, Sobabi Kurma, you can never write a part Bana Saksa. विद्यालय को संरचनात्मक र गई संरचनात्मक लेखा जोखा करने इसलाय अमिली प्रोग्राम संगत टाइप करने को जीरा का सों न्यूनतम संरचनात्मक सुरक्षा को पहचान करने को रा प्रायोरिटी को साथ में से अंगारी बढ़ावनी को रा स्टार्ट से जिले शेट अप करे कुछ सुरक्षा का योजना उतानशिल कार्यक्रम समुदाय परिचालन लगा� Uh, sorry, kitchen. Um, uh, uh, the main message here is that uh, that we need a strong response to the to the. Sorry, just to let me just gather my thoughts that we have a vision for 2030 to have a strong and safe schools uh, at the national level and to develop that vision in the future we have developed a, a strategy that looks at um, at integrating this uh, cssmp at the school level that looks at the capacity building as well as uh, facilities making the facilities uh assessing the facilities and making them safe for for the students and at least identifying the minimum uh, safety requirements of the facilities as well as areas for improvement um, at the community level as well just thank you thank you Vanessi. next slide please मैले आज यो अलिकति अघिल्लो वर्ष भनेको यसमा नगिल्लो हाम्रो इमेज बाट फ्ल्याश डेटा बाट चाहिँ लिएको विषय भयो अहिले संख्यात्मक रूपबाट हेरौ भने के देखिद रहिछ भनेर भन्दा चाहिँ हाम्रो कम्युनिटी स्कुलहरु 27540 देखिद रहिछ त्यो त्यस भित्र चाहिँ 94815 वटा स्कुल बिल्डिङहरु सेटअप भएको देखिद रहिछ त्यसै अन्तर्गत हेरौ भने 173582 वटा कक्षा कोठाहरु रहेको देखिद रहिछ त्यस्तै 54283 वटा स्टाफ रूम रहेको कुराहरु त्यसले सेटअप गर्दो रहिछ त्यस्तै चाहिँ 9533 वटा हाम्रो लाइब्रेरी रूमहरु रहेको भनेर देखाउँदो रहिछ त्यस्तै 3358 वटा चाहिँ खेलकुद रूमको रूपमा युज भएको र सामग्री व्यवस्थापनको लागि युज भएको यो हाम्रो भौतिक तर्फको अवस्था के रहेछ भनेर चाहिँ मैले थोरै हेरेको थिए यो एउटा इन्फर्मेसन शेयर मात्र मैले गरे यो चाहिँ यसको सोर्स भनेर भनेको हाम्रो फ्ल्याश सिस्टम नै हो 
Thank you, Ganeshi. He just shared the status of the uh, building uh, buildings and their conditions. Uh, there are 27,540 uh, community buildings uh, at the same time around 94,000 uh, school buildings around 17,000 class 173,000 classrooms 54,000 um, staff rooms 900 and uh, around 9,000 uh, libraries around 3,000 uh, sports, room. uh, sports rooms and the, the the source of this information is the IMS database thank you next uh, I mean, retrofitting co caricum say Ilinipa Sarkarco, Jun Sefi School, uh, Kaisandra Maisco construction co chroma say, um, Eura uh, priority best program ho. Ra Ili, I mean, Sanga, um, CLPO, PIU Bata, uh, Botisilla ma say, Satajar Panse, Tripan Nota School or Nirmar, Sampanoni, Sarama, uh, Chan. मरले सकिने अवस्थामा यी छन् त्यस्तै 14 जिल्लाको 143 वटा विद्यालयमा रेट्रोफिटिङ काम भइरहेको छ सीएलपीआईयु थ्रु नै त्यस्तै शिक्षा तथा मानव स्रोत विकास केन्द्रबाट जुन सीएसआरडी बाट वार्षिक रूपमा 150 को हाराहारीमा भनेर भनेको कहिले 160 हुन्छ कहिले यसैको हाराहारीमा चाहिँ हामीले स्थानीय तहमा बजेट वित्तीय स्थानान्तरण बाट चाहिँ बजेट व्यवस्थापन गरेर यो काम चाहिँ अगाडि बढिरहेको छ रेट्रोफिटिङ को सन्दर्भमा कन्जेन्जी आवश्यक यस अ थ्यांक यू गणेशजी सो दिस आर द करंट ऑनगोइंग प्रोग्राम्स फॉर रेट्रोफिटिङ थ्रू द गभर्नमेन्ट देयर इज रेट्रोफिटिङ हैज बीन प्रायोरिटाइज्ड the National Reconstruction Authority through them, there, there are over 7,000 uh, schools that are uh, being retrofitted and are at the status of being completed. Um, through other projects in 14 uh, districts, there are 143 schools that the retrofitting programs are ongoing. At the same time, through the um, through the center, there are at least 150 classrooms that are being retrofitted at a, on an annual basis. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kanchanji. Um, uh, may I correct uh, one thing? Uh, that is 7,000 uh, not retrofitting. That is the new construction. And the other, uh, under the 14 district, there is a 143 school. Uh, just um, uh, being retrofitting. Okay, yeah. sure. Thank you for that correction. Okay, thank you. अब को बातो future direction अब आमी कसरी जांच होता बन्नी बीचे नहीं मेरो अलिकति महत्वपूर्ण part हो आज को इसमें चाहिए ये उटा अयले आमी total school को बनी को this भरी को स्कूल को लागी स्कूल को इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर को ये उटा माप दंड स्टैंडर्ड से ही पुनरा बलोकन गरने क्रम माचो आमी संग क्या थी वो तेला अपडेटेड करे रा तेला ये अली रिव्यू करने क्रम माचो ये उड़ा से ही स्कूल भीतर रहने इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर को अवस्था क्यों उनसा कती आवश्यक उनसा तीस को लागी चाहिए ये उड़ा � रतिसे को आधार में टोटल स्कूल को सिचुएशन एनालाइसिस करने हमरो फ्रायोरिटी रहने चा यो जो ना हमरो अब अब को दस पर से एजुकेशन सेक्टर प्लान्स ले इंडिकेट करना पोजे को करा पनी यही नहीं हो रस संपूर्ण विद्यालय निर्माण रणनीति अब अलमन होने से यो संदर्भ में एक विद्यालय संपूर्ण पूर्वाधार स्कूल हुई कंप्लीट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर अनुसार विकास भाई को होने बनना ले अब को बातों में सही अमी जून स्कूल में प्रवेश कर सों त्यहाँ तो कि ये को मापदंड अनुसार संपूर्ण गर्नों पर निकाम रूप कंप्लीट करी शके पसी नेक्स्ट स्कूल में जाने करे रह प्रायोरिटी स्टेट करने क्रम में गवर्नमेंट अगाडी ब अरे ऐसे ही चा ऐसे ही को लागी चाहिए आवश्यक विधि मापदंड रहे इस तरीके का उनका सूचक करो 
तैयार होने इसलिए इस हमी गाइडेड होने पूर्वाधार विस को लगी स्रोत रिम्मेवारी को विन्यास को जिम्मेवारी बाड़फाड़ सहित को कार्यान्वयन प्रारूप विस होने यो चरण में हमी स्कूल को इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को लगी चाह हमी गवर्मेंट नन गवर्मेंट सेक्टर को फेरी गवर्मेंट को तब को फेडरल प्रोविंस रोकल गवर्मेंट को टोटल को रोल रेस्पोन्सिबिलिटी इन्स्योर करने बाड़फाड़ समेत कर इंप्लिमेंटेशन को फ्रेमवर्क सेट करने लाइन में हम अगड़ी बढ़ी रह प्लीज Thank you, Ganesh. Uh, so, on the last on this slide, he talked about the way forward for um, you know school safety infrastructure, school safe infrastructure. Particularly, one of the first objectives is to develop uh, school infrastructure standards that will be reviewed and updated. The conditions of all the schools will be audited. The comprehensive school construction strategy will also be followed. Uh, school should be developed according to a complete um, guidelines, and to prepare such methods and criteria, the standardization of indicators uh, is a must. Um, and the most important part is to bring all the stakeholders on board. That is why an implementation format that uh, allocates different resources and responsibilities, uh, including government and non-government stakeholders. Um, and the major stakeholders in the sector will be developed and implementation format will be developed accordingly. Uh, would you like to add anything else, uh, Ganeshi, to this? Chaina has done about maybe he could ask here, Gary, or Saturday, Sunga side, could I want to get that complete penny on solar? Anjumji, I think Ganesh sir's presentation has finished. Hello. Oh, yeah, it looks like Kanchan is uh, falling off. Oh. Oh, sorry, I had my mic muted. Uh, what I was saying is, Ganeshi, tapai ko prasthiti ko lagi dhiri dhiri dhanevan. Tapai aapno kura aru rakh dhinu vayur. Particularly way forward, I think, dhiri jana participants haru ko lagi interesting rahane cha. Rathis ko baare ma questions ro comments haru pani aung cha hala. Requesting all the participants to put their questions and comments on the chat box. Hamne chai aapa panelist haru sape jana को प्रस्तुति पच्चीस क्वेश्चन्स लिने अब हम अर्क पैनलिस्ट को तर्फ जाने गणेश जी फिर धीरे धीरे धन्यवाद थैंक यू थैंक यू uh okay um thank you all uh and uh, thank you for going through my impromptu translation today for this presentation and i apologize for any incorrectness uh, in that translation Moving ahead, as we go on to the next panelist, I would now like to invite, uh, like to invite uh, our next uh, panelist, uh, who is Liva Streshta, lead structural in engineer at the Asia Pacific for Build Change. For the past 15 years, Liva has been involved in retrofitting of stone masonry buildings and confined masonry house designs, construction of school buildings, along with conducting research and testing programs um, as well. Liva is responsible for controlling the quality uh, of design information and implementation for projects in the Southeast Asia Pacific region. I invite you, Liva, for your remarks on the three questions posed here today and any comments that you may have on what Ganeshi has also just uh, shared. So welcome, Liva. You have eight minutes, and I'll let you know when your seven minutes are up. Um, thank you, Kanchanji. Um, namaste to everyone. Uh, my name is Liva Shrestha. I'm the lead engineer of Asia Pacific for Build Change. Uh, next, please. Next slide, please. 
Um, as we all know, Nepal has a long history of destructive earthquakes. Uh, according to a study by UNDP, Nepal ranks 11th in terms of uh, um, earthquake risk. Um, the effects of the past school earthquake on school buildings uh, were pronounced, uh, where more than 8,000 schools were damaged in the earthquake affected area, and but luckily with no casualties uh, as, as it was on a holiday. Um, when Bill Change carried out a rapid assessment of 57 school buildings in and around Kathmandu Valley, um, 50 of them were found to be highly vulnerable to earthquake, but uh, you know, could be retrofitted. Um, retrofitting of schools is, is thankfully a concept that was already being implemented e even before the Gurkha earthquake. Uh, and in the aftermath, uh, you know, uh, it showed how effective and necessary school retrofitting is, not just for the children, but also for the community as a whole. Um, next, please. Well, all said and done, uh, when given a choice, the first preference of, of uh, people is still a new building uh, rather than retrofitting an old building. Um, to change this, uh, it requires extensive awareness building and sensitization of the local government bodies as, as well as the school management committees, uh, first reflecting on the devastation of the past earthquake on school buildings, and, and then the risk of impending future earthquakes. Um, you know, case studies of school that were retrofitted prior to the earthquake and performed well uh, should be extensively shared and promoted so as to encourage others to flow, for, uh, follow in the same footsteps. Um, as they hold a big uh, social responsibility in providing a safe environment, not only for the school children, but also to the community as, as a shelter post-disaster. Um, it is also important to educate the school management committee members, as well as teachers on what retrofitting is and, and how it is much more than just repair. Um, also retrofitting can be promoted as a cheaper option leading to a building as safe as a newly constructed one, uh, but consuming much less time. Um, another aspect uh, could be to familiarize local engineers on retrofitting practices. Um, a retrofitting guideline that is specific to school buildings can be an effective way to uh, provide guidance to local engineers so that they in turn can provide correct guidance to the school management on the methods of rest retrofitting. Um, DOE can incentivize retrofitting of public schools by providing special subsidies to schools who opt for retrofitting, a concession on the um, requirement of uh, local um, contribution could be one way to encourage retrofitting of public schools. Uh, next, please. One of the issues um, in implementing a retrofit program is the time and resources required to design the retrofit and, and getting it approved from the authorities. Um, when thinking of scaling up retrofitting, we need to think of seriously cutting down on the resources needed for the design process, as it may not always be affordable, um, you know, or technical manpower may not always be available. Um, one way of getting around this issue could be if we could, um, you know, group similar buildings into types and, and create type designs for retrofitting each type of uh, building group. Um, uh, the building, uh, the buildings could be grouped based on typology, um, number of stories, uh, openings, wall spans, and other vulnerability factors such as uh, geotechnical flooding, etc. Um, these type designs could could be implemented based on a strong applicability criteria, which ensures that the type design can be applied to the building. Um, this allows the design to be standardized, at least uh, you know, for certain types of building that pass the applicability criteria. And once this type design goes through the approval process, other buildings of the same type uh, need not go through the, the same time consuming process. Um, this also relieves the pressure on the resources, at least for the design um, process for many schools. Now, once a type design established, type design specific guidelines and training resources can be prepared, which can be applicable to several buildings and not just one building. Um, the standardized package can be prepared such that it capacitates the school management itself so that the retrofitting can run with uh, minimum technical intervention. And of course, the design should be affordable and um, you know, using materials that are available in the local markets. Well, another way of tackling the issue of scale up is to have uh, manuals for school retrofitting, sort of similar to uh, the repair and retrofit manual for houses, which caters to retrofitting of several buildings rather than just one building. Uh, with such type designs and, and guidelines in place, um, the design part is covered, but, but what about the construction phase? 
um, trainings to school management committee members on um, construction supervision, including um, sort of guiding resources together with uh, you know, limited access to a technical personnel for troubleshooting and supervision um, can be done. Um, an important aspect to <clears throat> um, all construction work is a, is a strong quality control system. Um, this can be more effective if, if the fund release from DOE could be um, you know, subject to construction progress as well as a, a demonstration of the construction quality. Um, it would also be good to create a, a roster of masons and engineers trained on retrofit so that uh, you know, these masons and technical personnel could be used time and again so that they get to keep practicing their skills, which would otherwise uh, be lost in due course of time. Next, please. Um, uh, sorry, next, please. Um, well, in conclusion, we need to promote retrofitting as a, as a cheaper uh, and a less time consuming option, uh, but equally safe option to new construction. Um, the government should uh, look into incentivizing retrofitting uh, financially or otherwise. Um, schools should be used as a demonstration building for retrofitting and educating the community on the benefits of retrofitting. Uh, it can change the local uh, perception on retrofitting by, by um, sort of defining it as, as being different from repairs. Um, the retrofitting of schools um, can, can be an opportunity to uh, train local builders on the retrofitting techniques. Um, the roster of these builders should be made widely available so that their skills can be used time and again. Uh, next, please. Um, for all the benefits mentioned earlier, community engagement during the entire process of retrofitting from the design phase to the construction phase is key. Uh, the educators and builders uh, you know, trained during the process should be used as ambassadors to promoting the retrofitting, not only for schools, but also for houses in the community. Um, thank you. Thank you, Liva, for a wonderful presentation. And I think you highlighted some of the very key points on why retrofitting is important, given the condition um, in Nepal, as well as, uh, you know, what are some of the ways that can make it more accessible. And, you know, you mentioned particularly about the type designs that can help reduce the cost of the, the, the cost and resources needed to design a retrofit project. So I think that might be of interest to Ganeshi and other panelists as well. And the phase-wise construction, um, as well as maintaining rosters of masons and thinking of school children as well as uh, staff of the schools and teachers as agents of change. So all wonderful recommendations, Diva. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, hopefully we can get to discuss this more uh, going ahead. Yeah. Um, so next we're diving into our uh, third panelist for the day. Um, now I invite uh, now I invite Arvind Soles Kosono. Sorry if I mispronounce your last name. Um, he's a humanitarian shelter and settlement practitioner currently based in Jakarta, Indonesia. Arvind worked in the construction of public infrastructure and private housing for 15 years before joining the sector. Working with NGOs, donors, and UN agencies, as well as Red Cross movement, he has managed large-scale projects on reconstruction and earthquake resistant structures and retrofitted more than 8,000 houses, over 50 clinics um, and community buildings. His experience includes working on rebuilding efforts in Nepal after the 2015 earthquake as well. Welcome, Irvin. I invite you to share your reflections on the three questions based on your diverse experience and what might be applicable to Nepal as well. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Namaste. Thank you for having me and thank you for the opportunity that I can share my experience and my learning on retrofitting program. Whether it is for public infrastructure, such as schools or clinics or private housing, I came across with questions. Can we scale up the retrofitting initiatives? Moreover, how to ensure its sustainability, which after the program ended, the local stakeholder can continue to work on retrofitting. 
or what will be the positive trend that we can expect to see in a year or a couple of years as an impact of the rental booking program. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. We are all aware that retrofitting has challenges. In terms of quality, it needs good supervision to ensure the retrofit works on following the engineering aspects. There is common problem uh, that there is a big gap between retrofitting skills and traditional uh, construction practices. People who have retrofitting skills are not always engineers, but those who already train to follow the building code. They were putting or modifying structure elements to have robust structure. The more opportunity on working with the retrofitting, the more they can upgrade their skills and adding more experience. On the other hand, local builders who have never been trained for build back safer or even, even retrofitting uh, will stay in their traditional practices. It will be a risk to give them retrofitting uh, job to them. Other might think, just give the retrofitting job to construction company, but giving the construction company does not mean that they already understand the retrofitting process. I had, an I had a bad experience back 12 years ago. Our organization gave a job to a construction company to retrofit a clinic. It came to our surprise they did not familiar how to process uh, on the retrofitting, which required proper planning, identify work on sequences to ensure the safety of the structure. And then uh, later on, they continue to modify the structural element to make uh, earthquake resistant structure. Other challenge on working with the construction company, they are preferring to work on new construction Constructing a new school building with modular, modular shape is preferable compared to retrofitting. The difference between both are the work volume, the time, and of course, the profit. Therefore, using local builder with the enhanced capacities through proper, proper training will be a solution. Next slide, please. Thank you. But train, uh, tr give training to local builders are only part of the system, which is, in my experience, it is on the supply side. If we want to scale up the retrofitting initiative and can be carried out by local stakeholders, we have also to work on the demand side. It will be difficult to run the wholesale curve at the same time, but we can start with small steps and adding more effort along the time to make the circle, circle is getting bigger, such as a spiral. Adding more trained local builders might not effective if the construction material is not available in the area. For instance, we always need sufficient number of deformed steel rebar or cement or wire mess or other material which needed for retrofitting. Combination on availability of uh, local uh, skilled builders and construction materials will definitely reduce the cost because with their upgraded skills, the builders can work more efficient and ensure the con uh, construction material always available when the time they are needed. Still in the supply side, we need to increase the local capacity. On retrofitting of public infrastructure, such as school or clinics, to at some extent need additional support to make the initiative can be carried out. Therefore, during the program implementation, we need to attract other institution which can be, which can support directly or indirectly on the retrofitting. Based on our experience, we can use retrofitted, retrofitted schools. Uh, it's already mentioned by Livaji uh, as a demo place uh, and other in, uh, retrofitted infrastructure as a model to attract more institution or corporate to finance the retrofitting. Who will explain or selling the retrofitting initiatives? It is not us actually, it is the local stakeholder or the beneficiary of the program. Therefore, during the program in implementation, it is important to train the local stakeholders how to sell the program in order 
more school can have funding for retrofitting. Training the beneficiaries as retrofitting agent is an important measure if we want to scale up the retrofitting initiative. Usually, a successful program can attract other donor or CSR program to finance other retrofitting uh, schools. Those are from the supply side. How about the, uh, the demand side? We have to work to build the community awareness. If the community understand earthquake resistant structure, they will aware not only safety of schools or clinics, but also their houses. Therefore, it is important to invite the community to understand, to understand the construction process. If we work with the construction company, it will be difficult to invite people to watch, to monitor, or to learn on the retrofitting process. But since the retrofitting is implemented by local builders, the process can become an education for everyone. It is an opportunity on sending the risk reduction messages. At the end, people can propose more school to be retrofitted by local, uh, with a local budget or local resources. All those aspects need support from the government policy. We need to check the government budget or school maintenance, whether there is a budget for seismic strengthening. Seismic strengthening is less popular compared to other maintenance, such as painting, repair for windows or doors or others. At least there should be government endorsement to open all party that can give their support on retrofitting program. If the government gives strong endorsement on retrofitting initiatives, the door will open to other institutions to support other institutions, other institution or other corporate donor uh, will give uh, will be willing to give their funding as invited by the government policy. If we want to scale up retrofitting initiative, it will not happen immediately. It takes it takes time. It might be a years to happen, but the effort need to be ensured that all aspects are present in the circle uh, in the illustration. Those aspects, both on demand side and supply side should be invested even in a small step. The key is the consistency, which will happen if the local stakeholder take the lead on this process. If you have any question or comment, please put in the chat box and I'm happy to answer and receive your feedback. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Arvin, for really demonstrating, um, you know, how there's so, uh, people find new buildings more attractive than retrofitting. And then how do you create that demand and, you know, that can drive supply as well and that it will be a strategic process to approach both sides of supply and demand. So thank you for presenting that uh, on retrofitting buildings. And I think it nicely complements what uh, Liva presented earlier as well. Uh, again, requesting participants to put their questions and comments on the chat box. We will review them and take them at the end of our final speaker today. Um, if you have any comments also, please do put them in. Now I would like to invite our next uh, speaker for, for this session. And our next speaker is Dr. Narayan Marasaini, uh, Deputy Team Leader uh, of the Nepal Safer School Project from the National Society for Earthquake Technology in Nepal, NSET. He's a disaster risk management expert and he holds a doctoral degree in disaster mitigation and management with a focus on geo disaster from Japan. As a division director at NSET, he's a leading school earthquake. He's leading the school safety program, one of the NSET signature programs that started in 1997. Uh, we're very thank you, uh, thankful for your presence here, Dr. Marasani, today. Uh, I would like to request you to give your remarks. Uh, you have eight minutes, and I will let you know when uh, your seven minutes are up. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Kansanji. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Very, very uh, comprehensive in introduction in a, a very short uh, remark. 
So uh, uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, and very much thankful to CHRT Ganesh sir uh, part uh, participating on this session. As well as I'm uh, looking the Dr. Yuraj Paudil from CLPI Education who are um, uh, leading the comp uh, comprehensive uh, retrofitting program from the government side. Uh, similarly from the FCDO colleague and all the attendees um, uh, on today's session. So um, without delay, I will, uh, I will go and put in my presentation. I will not talk uh, that much about the uh, devastating potential of the schools and their impact to the um, um, <clears throat> stakeholder, especially population who uh, stay more than 10 hours in a day, more than one third population of the country. So I, I want to take uh, a bit long back uh, from the middle level earthquake of 2011 in uh, eastern part of Nepal, Tablajung earthquake, as well as uh, 1988 earthquake, uh, Udaipur earthquake, which also uh, shows the uh, devastating potential in our e school infrastructure. So uh, considering this fact, uh, retrofitting has been uh, initiated uh, by NCT in 1997, um, uh, with, uh, as already has mentioned, with the, um, uh, establishing the uh, school earthquake safety program within the uh, NCT. So, um, uh, and we did not just uh, do the construction in the school through the retrofit. It's a um, uh, school earthquake safety program is a holistic program. Uh, taken to improve the earthquake safety of community by intervening in e school. Actually, through the school, we want to uh, reach to the uh, community uh, on other short path way that what we found e school have a high poten um, uh, devastating potential uh, during the earthquake as well as shortest uh, route to reach to the community. That is, and this concept and this program has been um, uh, conceptualized by the uh, alarm, alarming finding from the 643 public school building um, uh, detail assessment in 1996, which uh, shows that more than 75% uh, school buildings and the schools uh, will be uh, damaged heavily without rep uh, repair condition in the uh, nine MMI intensity setting. This is the uh, alarming uh, findings which um, uh, motivate us to work on the schools to save our children, our society. And uh, at, at the initial time when we started the uh, school retrofitting as a demonstration site to convince the um, uh, stakeholder and the authorities, that, uh, at that time there was a lot of the questions, some of our is the, this uh, retrofitting technology, which after the assessment we find the only one solution to reduce the um, uh, existing uh, risks within the school infrastructure because we cannot replace all the buildings one time uh, financially and the technically so um, uh, at that time we found the retrofitting or the strengthening the school building only the one solution to move forward uh, but at the time the, the technicality of the retrofit technology which is very new uh, for the country similarly economic um, uh, affordability of the country is it um, uh, affordable for the um, uh, Nepalese um, uh, economic condition or we have a multiple culture, we have the very specific building typology, um, uh, stone masonry with mud and uh, brick masonry with mud is the new technology is um, suitable for, uh, for this type of the buildings. And uh, another um, uh, question is, is the local construction because in our, at that time and still um, uh, these days, the construction practice is very informal. Uh, means the local contractor or the construction technician can um, implement this new technology. Those are the questions at that uh, time. And we very uh, patiently try to demonstrate through the retrofitting with engaging all the stakeholders uh, through the SESP program and then try to link with the global uh, campaign. Uh, as you know, after the 2005 World um, Conference in Earthquake, World um, Conference in Kobe, Japan, the UN system has um, uh, led the campaign to promote the disaster resilience in e schools um, <coughs> uh, through the schools. So uh, um, uh, connecting with the global uh, campaign and go global movement, collaborating with the national partner and the in international par partner, we developed the strategy for improving uh, seismic safety of the school in Nepal with the World Bank in 2008. 
Uh, after that, in 2010, government has uh, established the school safety pro program under the Department of uh, Education at that time. And then donor uh, uh, ADB especially uh, agreed to funding the piloting program in the Kathmandu Valley from the 15 school. At the beginning, government put the, uh, um, uh, um, uh, its money itself. Later on, the ADB has um, uh, um, supported um, uh, to the government through the ANSET to piloting the retrofitting work in the Kathmandu Valley. That is how the retrofitting works based on our experience and learning progress um, uh, in Nepal. And nowadays through the school, uh, comprehensive school safety master plan, minimum package, uh, and the um, um, school retrofitting is the uh, one key um, existing vulnerability reduction uh, activity on go government uh, leadership through the school sector development uh, plan, uh, which is a comprehensive program under the government leadership. So uh, uh, basically at the initial time, still uh, the school outreach safety program under which we are um, uh, implementing the retrofitting of the schools, schools. It's not uh, the uh, only just for the constructions. Um, uh, we incorporate all, try to incorporate the software part as well. Our next raising risk uh, reduction message to school uh, population to the community. Similarly, engagement of the all the stakeholder, um, uh, including government, uh, civil society, organization. We always try to work under the leadership of the government and we support it uh, based on our capacity and disseminate the replicate the best practices to the new area. That is how we are uh, moving uh, forward on this um, uh, retrofitting work in, uh, in these schools. Uh, uh, and another is the SC, the community to manage the implement on the project. Always we support uh, sitting on behind community and the government are the leader for, for uh, whatever the work we do and we support. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, already, Levaji has mentioned the emphasis on the use of the local material and resources always priority for us and uh, develop the adopt appropriate cost effective uh, replicable technologies always uh, in mind and we are collaborating with the different academic institutions to, to develop the new te uh, technology, more cost effective technology. And if we look on the component under the uh, rate of fitting or work on the comprehensive school um, earthquake safety program, uh, construction as a foundation uh, uh, to strengthen the existing uh, vulnerable building. But there, together with the construction, we have the uh, training um, uh, activity for the local masons, training for the teacher, increasing awareness of the community through the school, uh, enhancing the earthquake preparedness of the school through the emergency response plan. And similarly, engagement and involvement and uh, uh, leadership of the government to institutionalize the um, uh, whole process. That is how we are working in, in the school um, uh, earthquake safety program uh, for the retrofitting of the school building. And NSSP also, we applied the same approach. And looking on the major questions, how to scale up, this is the challenge. As before the uh, 2015 earthquake, we piloted um, uh, whether it worked or not. And the 2015 earthquake demonstration, uh, demonstrated the technology, the approach we are implemented, implemented for uh, uh, retrofitting of the schools worked well. So the, now the technology uh, we have, now the knowledge we have, uh, only uh, remains is how to scale up to reach um, uh, in, uh, as Ganesha give the database more than 35,000 schools, more than um, um, era, about uh, 200,000 school building. So schooling, uh, scaling solution looking, coming up to the NSSP project is we need to have the strong database about the vulnerability of the existing school building. Still, we don't have the national database on that. We did the um, uh, fraction fraction in different uh, study, but we don't have the national scenario on how exactly the existing vulnerability exists in the schools. So we need to carry out the national campaign to do the assessment of, of all the inf inf infrastructure in the school. Similarly, um, uh, onward, we need to develop the action plan in line with our national disaster uh, 
um, uh, strategy action plan 2018 to 2030, which also mentioned that we should have the sector wise and all government level uh, action plan with the target short term, medium, mid term, and the uh, long term by uh, 2030. Uh, so we need to develop the action plan after um, assessing the vulnerability for all 753 local uh, unit. <laughs> so another thing as we talk about the technology, the, um, uh, the capacity is very limited um, uh, in the rural area, in the uh, outside the Kathmandu Valley. So massive capacity enhancement program for local level on assessment and design and construction is needed. It should not be uh, um, project based. Not, not NG, uh, sorry, you're you have 30 seconds remaining. Okay, now I will complete. And balance mm -hmm. between the hardware and software means the physical science and so social science should be uh, goes together, not only the seismic hazard, uh, as the Nepal is the multi hazard uh, rich country, so we have to uh, focus and look on the multi hazard approaches as well. All building within the compound one go, which is uh, Ganeshar already mentioned about that. We, I try to calculate it based on the uh, our NSSP experience. How much will be the cost uh, required to reduce the uh, all the existing vulnerable school building? Uh, it comes around the 40 uh, billion Nepali rupees uh, per year. Uh, 40, uh, 40 Arab in Nepali, that means um, 40 billion Nepali rupees per year to the 10 years plan, that comes 400 billion Nepali uh, rupees, means 400 Arab Nepali rupees required based on our, uh, our experience in NSSP. We worked in the top hill in Assam, mid hill in Surkhet, in um, uh, Torai in Bordia, based on this experience, and this is not a big amount, but we need the strong strategy and action plan to move ahead uh, with the uh, government leadership, collaborating all the stakeholders together from the one single door comprehensive program. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Naranji. Thank you very much. Um, I think you put up nicely the experience of NSET uh, working on retrofitting from, um, you know, the past experience and as you highlighted that the technology is there, that it has worked through your experience, through, you know, uh, many professionals experience, it has worked on the ground and now the time has come to scale it up and thank you for presenting that calculation at the end also that kind of gives a picture on what kind of resources are needed, but one thing that you also highlighted was that the national database on vulnerability uh, of the existing schools are quite required, uh, very much required to take this in scale and as well as the uh, need to look at the comprehensive of all the disasters, uh, look at the disasters facing the schools comprehensively that can help, um, you know, focus on retrofitting as well. Um, so thank you for your remarks. And thank you also for connecting your you know, perspective with other speakers today. Um, I would like to request again participants to put their questions and comments on the chat box. And if you would like to speak, also please raise your hand. Um, there's a comment from Helen Sherpa that the risk assessment of all the buildings by province Palika engineers seems to be an urgent priority and flagged as uh, uh, needs to be flagged as a priority for retrofit retrofitting or replacement as quickly as possible. Um, thank you, Helen, for joining us today as well. But now going um, back to uh, Ganeshji, um, you know, you have uh, had a chance to, to listen to all the panelists today and there are some recommendations coming up from Liva, Arwin and uh, Naranji as well. Um, so if you would like to share any thoughts, Ganeshji, are you still with us? Ganeshji, Suni Rakhmabakasa. Consensi Suni Rasu Malay Dom Kusilai Rasa, Mother Savik of the Bellit Kuraru Suni, Rais Vata, Mother Savaku Tun Moralis Uti Musmaira Kosa, Priority Sector Kuru Masaila is Tapit Gornu Persani, Iskola is a Ili Amisanga Boko, Tineota Lear Ku Government Ku Bisku Eva. Uh, coordination, like, 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 like,
इसलिए एटा मोर टेक्निकली एटा एवेरनेस इसलिए क्रिएट कर नहीं हम साझा मुद्दा को रूप में रहो भूरा आक हमी एकदम गवर्नमेंट को अब आगामी दस वर्ष को प्लांगक क्रम में रहो होना यो अत्यंत समय सान्दर्भिक छलफल इसलिए तीन वा लीयर को को लोकल गवर्नमेंट प्रोविन्सिल रेडरल गवर्नमेंट इन टोटल लाई एजुकेशन सेक्टर प्लांग गाइड करने भाग यहाँ फिडबैक स्वाभाविक रूप में काम करने सेयर कुछ हमी फेरी छलफल करने प्लटिंग करें अलग अल अलि विषय केन्द्रित भर थप छलफल इसलिए डिमाड करने लगी भर्खर नायडजी ने बजेटरी एटा फिगर आउट समेत करें एटा कुरा मतलब लियान भग स्वाभाविक रूप में प्लांग को बजेटिंग प्लांग को एकदम मेजर पार्ट नहीं हो रहा हमी यहां कतिपय इश्यूर में थप छलफल कर अगड़ी बढ़ना सकने स्पेस रहे भूरा मैं यहाँसंग फिर भी सेयर करना चाहूँ र फिर यहाँसंग हमी पुनः छलफल कर मेरे बुझाई रहो तर कई पर्टिकुलर विषय जोड़िए हस् मेरी मैं ये कुछ राखे हस् धन्यवाद Answer. Thank you, Ganesh Ji. So you you shared that uh, the the recommendations, the views that coming from the panelists are quite valuable, and that the deeper discussion is very much required. Uh, you also found interesting what uh, Naren Naren Ji had shared about um, about the the budgets. And that the particular focus discussion is required very much on the line of some of the recommendations that are coming up. Uh, Ganeshi, I, I just wanted to follow up. You know, you had mentioned that uh, the for the implementation guideline, how each government can have different roles, um, but also how can the audience today can support this uh, effort, and particularly at the different levels, how can we Encourage retrofitting um, practice. So, Ganeshi, only um, the other follow-up questions on that. I am, I am the audience. So, because of the, I am you. That means the implementation guideline go kura rakhnu baaye. So, this ma because of the contribute banana. So, some bolli bolli yuta session ho. This is introduction to the NSSP construction manual. So, I am Liva ji le pani agi kura ganu baate. Or the construction guideline manual ko. आवश्यकता को बारे में भोलि सेशन भैर एज अ पार्टिशिपेन्ट्स विभिन्न बैकग्राउंड आंप्लिमेंटेशन गाइडलाइन प्रिपरेशन प्रोसेस में कसरी कंट्रीब्यूट कर सकसनजी मैं तैयारी डॉक्टर युवराज पौड़े राखी रहनी थप हम एजुकेशन सेक्टरम निके लमो काम करना वहाँ को कुरा कि लिस्ट में जोड़ू जस्तु लगे हजर हो गणेश एक हे वहाँ को कमेंट युवराज जी वुड यू लाइक टू अन्यूट यू माइक इन पुट यूर थट्स थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर गिविंग मी द फ्लॉर Uh, yes, retrofitting is a very uh, interesting. Actually, we have started uh, from 2009 uh, from the government sector for the retrofitting of the school building in Nepal from the support of ATB. Before that, we have some you know the scattered in the past wise program that we have implemented. Uh, however, uh, uh, in summary, what we can say. Uh, the we need a uh, lot of uh, community uh, you know the awareness program that means the awareness not only the community people but also the police level and the uh, many you know the uh, people who really wanted to work on, in this sector as well because the uh, there are you know the uh, so many issues when uh, when we talk uh, that uh, the retrofitting Uh, you know the need to be implemented. Uh, you know the 
uh, throughout the country. So uh, for that, uh, I think the, from, from ADB support now from CLPIU, uh, we have, you know, the, uh, take this program uh, through the government sector as well in the holistic, as a holistic approach. Uh, so my, my point here is that, you know, the assessment is very, very important. You know, the, without assessment, if we go directly for the uh, implementation of the retrofitting, you know, the, uh, then uh, sometimes uh, we will be in base. That's why the assessment is very important. Uh, capacity building uh, to the, not only technical persons, capacity building to the masons is very, very important. And also the, as I mentioned before, the community awareness is also for creating the demand from the community, creating the demand from the uh, locals, uh, the students, teachers, and parents. The, if we create the demand from them, then ultimately the people who are living in the policy level and also the who are living in the yes uh, the government and also the development partner level also we need to you know the work on that uh, yeah, program so uh, that's my <laughs> point uh, at this moment thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you very much Yuraji, for coming in with your comments uh, and very timely as well. And I understand that you'll be presenting later this week as well. So please, uh, participants, if you want to hear more, uh, please join us for, to, for our other sessions as well. Uh, Ganeshi, you wanted to add a little bit more. Uh, may I give you the floor now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, CSRD uh, is uh, going to uh, develop one school uh, infrastructure standard um, from this year. Uh, so I think um, uh, we'll call uh, you who are uh, interesting to contribute uh, uh, regarding this uh, issue and definitely it can be um, added more uh, other issues uh, uh, like uh, retrofitting a specific issue and uh, Dr. Rivera has already um, uh, raised the issue of uh, ne necessary of the uh, school assessment um, uh, issues. So uh, uh, I think uh, we will call uh, you um, uh, to uh, uh, when when we we will develop the uh, our um, guideline and the standard. Uh, we will call you, and the, everybody can contribute for that. Thank you very much, Ganeshi. Um, I think many of the participants would really appreciate that uh, opportunity as well to work with the government on this uh, standard that, uh, and indicators that are being developed. Uh, we're uh, coming to the last uh, 15, 20 minutes uh, of the program. And now just wanted to, you know, again, give participants any chance for questions or comments. In the meantime, uh, a question for Liva and Arvin. As we know that the attention, uh, as we know that, uh, that there needs to be attention uh, between disasters as well for safe building, um, you know, often the attention is lost between one disaster to the other, and it becomes less uh, of a priority. This also came up yesterday during our session, how we need to sustain uh, people's and stakeholders' attention to make sure that the effort is continuous. Um, do you have, in your experience, any best practices that you can share um, where policies of programs have been successful in making sure that the awareness of need for earthquake safe constructions uh, has been implemented or you would like to share with the participants? Liva and Arvin. Uh, Arvin, would you like to go first? Okay, thank you. So. If we want to retain the expertise, uh, it, it means that we have to continue on uh, training. We have to continue on working on the retrofitting. Uh, many of us uh, might think that retrofitting should be a, a big project. Uh, we have to retrofit all elements of the structure. Based on my experience, uh, even a small step, uh, for instance, in Indonesia, we have a uh, solid uh, gable wall from bricks, but they forgot to put uh, uh, the forgot to put the, the beams 
and the, the columns in the it's a, like a frame, a still a, like a, a reinforced concrete frame to have to to hold the bricks. So the program was uh, to change the gable wall with the more the lighter element or strengthen the gable wall. It need, it it doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't mean that the the costs will be expensive. Ex, uh, it will be uh, less expen uh, expense expensive. Uh, it uh, more uh, we can we can work it with the small budget. So uh, as as long as we have uh, consistency on the program, we have to have a um, a work in the in the field. It create the uh, you know the retain the expertise in the to the local builders. It is better to work on the small small uh, small program uh, rather than if we want to have a big project, but actually we don't have the budget, we don't have the funding. So just work in the if we can have a consistency on working on a small program, uh, it can attract the other donor to, to, to support. So that's that's my experience working in the small program, but uh, if we can continue, the impact will be bigger. Uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, it's like a spiral. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arvin. Uh, now I would like to uh, request to leave up for her comments and especially around, uh, um, you know, once the disaster has passed a few years, uh, usually people forget the impact of the disaster and the need for preparedness. So any experience that you might have on how to retain, you know, people's attention on, on sustaining such efforts uh, in the long term. Or, or any of the reflections that you might have from the different panelists that you've heard so far? Well, I, I think, I mean, this, uh, the past Nepal Gorka earthquake was not the first earthquake in Nepal. It's not going to be the last. So we definitely need to keep the conversation going around um, retrofitting. I think, uh, you know, working in with schools is, is the best um, point, uh, really, uh, to make that happen, like engaging, um, you know, school committees uh, in, in like discussing about disaster, having disaster plans, and also sort of including um, conversations about uh, disaster in the course curriculum for students. So, you know, in future that that um, awareness is embedded into, into them. I think uh, that schools are a, a very good uh, starting point. Uh, also something that that uh, is could be very interesting is that uh, when we um, in, in, the, in the few schools that we do retrofit, ha has been retrofitted so far, I think it, it, it's also good to demonstrate these uh, buildings itself as, as an education, as a tool for education. Like um, in the past, what we've done is we've sort of um, colored elements that, you know, sort of that contributes to um, earthquake safety, you know, coloring the bands differently and having like a signage or information board on the side to sort of... Uh, and describe what that these bands uh, sort of, you know, what sort of risks it mitigates. So things like that, I think, can be embedded in, in within the school premises itself and within the school in the education system itself to keep that conversation going and 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 I think uh, keep that awareness, um, an ongoing awareness on on the need for retrofitting and need for earthquake resilient um, structures. Um. Thanks, uh, Liva, for those uh, suggestions. Yesterday also we heard some examples of how even the students and teachers can be involved in identifying hazards in the school as well as monitoring retrofitting projects as a way of learning opportunity um, as well. So thank you for that example. And we're coming towards the end, but just wanted to highlight, uh, you know, I think there's a very nice comment linked to your um, presentation as well. 
Uh, Vita has shared in the chat box that tomorrow's session on the retrofitting construction manual might be of interest. It covers a number of points raised by Leva on construction quality, and the manual is also available for download from the NSET website. And there is a link. Uh, so anyone who's interested, please go ahead and download uh, that publication um, so much. Thanks, uh, Vita, for sharing that very much. And thank you, Sabina, for your comment as well. Uh, on the demand for intensive technical support is also needed, that it has been effective where intensive technical support investment has been made, but important to discuss how to make it technical friendly and a sustainable intervention to embed with the institutional arrangements on the in the three layers of the government. Thank you, Sabina Ji, for your comment as well. Uh, Liva, just wanted to know, uh, wrapping it up, if you had any other further comments, um, you know, any closing remarks uh, from your side as well? Um, uh, well, I, 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 I too um, have like a short response to Sabina Ji's uh, comment, which is quite, I mean, the, the concept is that retrofitting is technically very uh, challenging and it's very difficult for uh, local schools to include that. And I think that's, that's, that's a reality, uh, but but that can also be, I think, eliminated by, uh, for example, in the housing reconstruction, um, we used a sort of guideline approach or a type design approach where um, the design process itself, which is sort of um, thought to be very complicated, it can be simplified uh, when we use a type design approach or a guideline based approach, it can be simplified and um, these uh, messaging on you know, how to implement a retrofit correctly can be uh, done in a very um, simplified way, targeted towards engineers, targeted towards um, you know uh, school uh, committee members, targeted towards builders. So I think with that approach, hi Liva, did we lose you? Okay, can you hear me, Amy? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Did we lose uh, Leva? Yeah, I think we've uh, lost audio on Leva. Perhaps we can move to final reflections from everybody else and then um, uh, uh, when she rejoins, we can follow. Sure, yeah, thanks, Jumaima. Um, there's also a comment from Anil Mupane, so please do take a look at that comment. Now, I uh, would like to request uh, Narayanji for his you know, final reflections and thoughts as we start to wrap up this panel discussion. Thank you again, uh, Kantanji. It's a very good discussion, and uh, we have a very experienced people from the government side, from the uh, development partner side as well. So I think this is the reflection of the country of uh, how we are talking uh, to, to scale up the retrofitting uh, throughout the country. Uh, here, I want to again uh, to emphasize the cost wise way based on the NSSP experience. We worked in the Acham, we worked in the um, uh, Sulket, we worked in the uh, Tora in Bordia. And we found that in tentatively 10 million rupees per school. Uh, Nepali rupees for each school can sufficient to strengthen the um, structure and non-structure part of these schools based on our experience. If we um, uh, multiply the um, uh, 753 local unit and the 35,000 schools, if the government have a um, uh, strong strategic action plan with all the um, uh, as an average 753 um, uh, local unit can strengthen the five school per year with the uh, this um, um, 40 uh, billion Nepali rupees, then we can um, uh, um, uh, reduce all the vulnerability exist in the uh, current uh, schools uh, by 2030, which is, which is our um, uh, education policy as well. So um, here I saw the comment from Sabina as well. Very, um, uh, I want to thank you, the Sabina Ji from the UNICEF. We worked in the Assam in the Ownis and the software part uh, four five years back, and that pays for the NSSP as well, because it's as I uh, want to uh, remember when we reached some of the palika in the uh, remote areas, how the, uh, constant they are to use the rate of it, uh, technique, because they get the money from government from three years back, but they cannot utilize that money because of the lack of technical capacity. That is how we 
uh, very intensively interact with the um, uh, local unit, community, all the government uh, level and other stakeholders in the local area, and then convince them. Now, when we, uh, we are coming back from this project, all the uh, people, um, uh, they are school community, children, um, uh, local government, they are very enthusiastic to um, um, uh, take forward this retrofitting technology and they have a belief now. That means if we patiently work uh, uh, looking on the um, uh, local scenario, it, it will de definitely work well. Uh, that is what I want to um, add uh, here. And one thing I fully agree with uh, Livaji, um, working on the school is the, just the lighting the fire in the dry season in the forest. That is how rapidly it um, uh, spread. Uh, so that uh, the working in the school, not only um, strengthen the school or the extend the capacity on DRR in the school, it will definitely spread very uh, rapidly uh, throughout the community. That's why we need to work in the schools together, involving all. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your remarks, Narayanji, and also connecting your perspectives with Nivaji as well. Um, thank you very much for your comments. Next, I would like to request uh, Ganeshi if he has any final thoughts or comments uh, as we are coming to an end now. So, uh, Awesome. Thank you, Dhanivad Ganeshi. Thank you very much for your presentation and also inviting uh, all the participants and uh, panelists to contribute in the future guidelines uh, and standard uh, development process. Um, Arvin, uh, just uh, would you like to take one minute to say any final remarks um, from your end? Yeah, thank you. Uh, when the program ended, usually uh, the, the donor asked us, is it possible to scale up the program without your presence? That's what uh, intriguing question to ask at the time. So uh, then it changed our perspective uh, in the, the, the next project. Uh, we have to invest even in a very small uh, step. But we have to ensure all stakeholders to be participate. So uh, in my perspective, it is important to train not only the builders, but the local stakeholders. They have to lead the process. Uh, when the time that we end our program, they will continue to work with the local builders, work with the local vendors, how to ask them to always pro provide the, uh, the materials. They have to work with the media that they will send the messaging on the build back safer on the retrofitting. They also will work with the, they will, will work also with the uh, government to, uh, to to work with the retrofitting on the school projects or all the all the clinics, so it is the how to ensure that the local stakeholders to lead all the process because our presence is limited. They will continue on to ensure the uh, the safety of the people in their area. So that's from my uh, my 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 learning. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I yes, thank you very much, Arvin. And again, highlighting that how important it is to bring all the stakeholders on board uh, from the very beginning that the questions uh, like Sabinaji also raised on technical support becomes so critical for sustaining uh, long-term efforts and how do we build that technical capacity from early on. Uh, Liva J, Liva, are you, are you there? Are you back with us? Do you want to share your final thoughts? I don't think she's back on the call. 
Okay, sure. Thanks, Amy. Uh, with that, uh, we're coming to um, the end of the panel discussion and what a lively discussion it has been so far. Um, lots of ideas, recommendations coming in, a lot of connections between yesterday's session and also setting a very great stage for the session tomorrow at the same time on introduction to the NSSP construction manual. So please do join us uh, tomorrow where we'll continue this discussion as well. With this, I invite Lila for her closing remarks. Uh, thank you from her. Lila, over to you. Thanks so much, Kanchan. You've been great. Well, I have the privilege on behalf of NSSP, uh, Crown Agents, and all of our partners, NSET, ARUP, and Safe Children, uh, to thank everybody for a great discussion uh, and all the comments. It was really um, it was really interesting to listen to and a lovely way of ending this program. Uh, we invite you all to participate in the Learning Week sessions that are coming up in the rest of the week. They're at the same time and you can see them uh, in your registration um, through the Zoom, uh, the Zoom registration. So please do participate in that and feel free to share the invite with anybody in uh, your networks because we'd love to have all kinds of people participating. Uh, a big thank you to our panelists for giving their time and energy to this. Arwen, lovely to see you again. Leva, great to see you. Narayan, hopefully we'll see you again soon. A special thank you uh, to Mr. Ganesh uh, Powdell for taking the time. I know you're very busy, sir. Uh, and, and, and another special thank you to Dr. Ubraj Powdell. And we are looking forward to your participation um, Thursday in the session on accessible design. Um, of course, finally, we do thank UK for all of their support in this project. Uh, it's been really a great discussion and I look forward to the rest of the learning week um, sessions. So thank you so much. Thank you, Lila. Thank you uh, again to you for and your team for organizing um, these sessions. Um, just there was a question regarding uh, the recording of the session. It will be available on the Crown Agents YouTube, so it will be accessible there uh, maybe in the next couple of days. So again, thanks all the participants uh, and panelists for joining us during the busy schedule. Please do continue to join us for our future sessions, same time. Um, and thank you again for a great discussion.